Hey, Tom. Tom. Shows it red. What? The live stream shows it red. The blinker. Yeah, that means it's live. Yeah, that's why. That's what I'm saying. It's, oh, it's, it's that, red. It's a little red circle. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right. That's what I'm telling you. It's a good day. Thanks, Jerry. Tom. Like, it's not showing audio or video. I'll come over in a second. Ready? Good afternoon and welcome, everybody, uh, for today. A very special press conference. We are joined today. Special guest, new head football coach Chris McCullough. I'll turn it over to Dr. Woodley. Um, start us off. Well, first, we're very excited today to announce that we can't wait for all of you to meet Chris McCullough today, our new head football coach. Everyone who has met Chris has the same reaction. He's got a lot of energy and a lot of big dreams, so everybody needs to just buckle up. I want to take a moment to thank a few people who have been very helpful in this uh, very important process. First, Scott Farmer, who's not here today, but our former athletic director worked with Todd and I to really go out and look uh, for just the best absolute possible uh, candidates, and so we're really thrilled with where we are here today. Justin, I see you in the room. I want to say thank you to Justin. Uh, our very first football coach, we're grateful for the foundation that you built on our program from day one, and we're really pleased that you're part of our executive leadership team. So thank you to Justin. Todd, you know, a lot of work. Yep. <laughs> so a lot of uh, opportunities to really uh, make our athletics the best that it can be and to take all of our sports to the next level. So we're grateful for Todd's dedication uh, and for, uh, for the athletic programs, but also, also just for the university as well. You know, strong athletic programs are important uh, to the future of this university. And they're important, uh, number one, football is one of the most visible sports that we have. And that we know that when our student athletes are successful, then we as a university are successful. Winning uh, programs drive enrollment, they boost community support, and all of this leads to excitement on our campus. So let's be clear, anyone who knows me knows that I, I like to win. Uh, but it's equally important uh, to me that our athletes are successful, both on and off the field. That the classroom is an important part of what they do. And frankly, their personal lives and the success in their personal lives are important to me as the president and our team as well. I talked to Chris about this very exact thing, and I love the way he thinks about football as a family. You'll even see that in his hashtag. Chris communicated to me that he believes that the players should expect to have a winning program. They should also be out in the community serving others, and we have a reputation for that here at UTPB. They should be dedicated to their education as they are to their athletic pursuits. Uh, and I agree with Chris, we want it all. So we're very excited about the future here, and uh, we are delighted to welcome Coach Chris McCullough as our new leader. Welcome to the Top and Hang Chris. I'll echo a few things that Dr. Woodley spoke on. Um, so thanks for joining us today. Good afternoon and Happy New Year to everybody. Um, we're here to introduce Chris McCullough as the next head football coach at UT Permian Basin. And I also have some thank yous. I want to echo Scott Farmer. Scott's counsel throughout this process has been invaluable. Um, he and I jumped in and started uh, really digging through a list of candidates, uh, a highly competitive list of candidates that, um, that we spoke to, uh, weeded out, and, and, and just really worked this whole list. And Scott's, uh, again, Scott's counsel was, was tremendous and, and helped us out, helped me out a lot. Um, I'd like to say a few thank yous to campus administrators and execs that helped this uh, process move along as quickly and as smoothly as possible. Ron Appling, our uh, Director of Human Resources, Cesar Valenzuela, our Executive VP for uh, Business Affairs, Becky Spurlock, our, our Senior VP for Student Athlete Affairs, um, our VP for Marketing and Communications, Tatum Hubbard, and uh, her right arm, Alexa Dunson, 
uh, who's our director of strategic communications. All these folks on campus, it, it really does take a village when we talk about it. I can't get these things done without the help of, of these folks around our campus, and they, they really helped uh, streamline the process and accelerate it and to get Chris here as quickly as possible. Um, we had a group of donors who visited with candidates. Thank you to the donors for your, your guidance and, and uh, investment in our programs. Uh, what you do for us is, is so beneficial and you are so generous with not just what you do for us, but your, your time and your energy into our athletics program and, and university, and we appreciate that a lot. Finally, thank you, Dr. Woodley, for, as you mentioned, your guidance and wisdom and vision through this process. Um, part of the reason that, that I saw the opportunity here at UT Birmingham Basin is because of Dr. Woodley's vision and what she wants from not just athletics but the overall university and how athletics can contribute to the, the university. And so I'm excited about continuing that on. Um, and then Justin, thank you for, for building this foundation that we, we have. We appreciate it and I'm excited to have you right across the hall from me. Um, as I said before, the search was highly competitive. We had a, a really strong list of candidates that, that Scott, Farmer, and I worked through. Um, candidates from all across the country. Early in the process, it was very evident that Chris should be in that finalist group. Um, through the conversations I had with him, through conversations Scott had with him, he's engaging, he's curious, he's confident, and as you'll find out, he's a bit of an old soul. As, as I like to say. Um, his ability to connect with student athletes and earn their trust plays a vital role in, a success, in any successful program. And I think his ability to reach across that aisle and, and earn their trust early on will be a huge asset. Chris is a student, has a student athlete forward vision. cares about our student athletes stood out amongst this group of candidates. You know, intercollegiate athletics and specifically coaching is truly a calling, a calling to serve and educate. Coaches are teachers just in a different classroom. Chris understands we're preparing for student athletes for the day their sports take a reduced role in their lives and certainly we expect our student athletes to graduate and have that degree when they walk across the stage. But intercollegiate athletics provides conduit to deliver lessons for student athletes that they'll use throughout their lives. And Chris brings that to the table in this leadership role. Chris is, is a bit of a grinder. Um, his background, uh, through it's funny what you can uh, divine um, through some Google searches. He was uh, in a, in a, on a podcast that I listened to, and there were some news articles. And uh, when he graduated from undergrad, he sent out 3,500 emails across the country because he wanted to get into coaching and got a hundred responses back and ended up at Old Dominion yeah. and and so that tells you the kind of he's going to get after it you know he's going to he's going to be a tireless uh, work put in tireless work as the head football coach here um, and oh by the way yeah he's a pretty excellent football coach so um, I want to say welcome to Hannah uh, who's with us, uh, his, his wife is with us today, and, and Chris is mother law Tina. So thank you all for joining us today. We're glad you're here and able to come and join us. So without further ado, we're going to back up our chairs here for a second. I want to introduce Chris McCullough as our next head football coach at UT Permian Basin. Raph, did you get it? Okay. <laughs> It kind of took the spotlight off my wife, but first and foremost, I want to acknowledge her. Uh, her and her mother-in-law drove seven and a half hours last night, got in around 12.30 just to be here today. Um, my wife is six months pregnant, so this next month until we transition here to the basin, she's at back in Ada by herself. Um, so that's a real champion right there, a great coach's wife. Um, a lot of thank yous go out. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Scott Farmer. Thank you, Dr. Woodley, for this amazing opportunity. My family and I couldn't be more excited to be here. Uh, <clears throat> to, to be a Falcon and to make the base in our home, um, it's really special. This place, when you first land in Midland at the airport and you make this drive, 
you realize really fast that yeah, the drive is uh, not a lot there, but once you get into Odessa or the Midland area, it is amazing. It is beautiful. There's great people here. We're excited to be here. Big thank you to Justin Kerrigan. All right. It is not easy to be a head football coach. It is not. And it is definitely not easy, and I haven't had to do it to start a program. It takes a, a lot of heart. It takes a lot of hours. And he did a phenomenal job and created a great foundation for me moving forward. So I appreciate you. <clears throat> Next thank you, and this is a big thank you, is Thank you to East Central, uh, East Central University. I spent four years there. When I was hired in January of 2018, I was the lowest man on the totem pole, making the lowest amount of money on the staff. And uh, we took over a program that won three games in two years. We were not very successful at all. And like he said, I just grinded, the whole staff grinded. And uh, four short years later, we finished the season nine and three. And I climbed the ladder as we, we got that and was the head football coach last year. We went nine and three, had the best season in 29 years won our first bowl game in 62 years against Texas A&M and Kingsville, which I'm excited to play them again. Um, but most importantly, it's, it's the people there at East Central. It's those players I got to coach all those years. Um, those are some special, special kids, and that made it really, really tough to leave. Um, but just look around. I mean, look at this room. It's, it's phenomenal. It's, it's hard to say no. Um, you know, I told my wife months ago when I was still the interim head coach at East Central that it would take – something very, very special for me to leave that place. It would take a school that can come in and I can be a national contender right away. And this is one of those programs, it really is. Um, <clears throat> after we beat Kingsville, we, we talked on the ride home and I thought there was no way I would leave. But this man beside me is a phenomenal recruiter, probably the best one in this building right now. And uh, he, he convinced me to come down here. And once I stepped foot on campus, it was, it was so, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. Um, it wasn't easy to leave that family of players, and you're going to hear me a lot say family with two L's, um, and I'll get into that in a second, but UTPB has it all. The leadership and the community are second to none from what I've experienced so far. Um, I get to wake up every morning and drive and park in that parking lot and look up and see the Kirk Edwards Performance Center and be like, wow, that is a palace I get to step foot in every single day. So it, it is awesome to be here. Um, to my new family of players. Um, I know you didn't choose me, I understand that, but I chose you. I left a very, very talented football team, a team that would probably make the NCAA playoffs next year. But I left them and I chose you, and there's a lot of reasons behind that that we'll get into when we get behind closed doors. But I want to be here, and I cannot wait to get to work. We have a long ways to go to get to the goals that we have, but we're not as far as we think. We really are, so I'm excited for that. Talking about culture, all right, you're going to hear me say it a lot, family. All right, with two L's. So family for me stands for focus, accountability, mentality, inspire, learn, love, and yes. And in our program, we'll get into more details of what each of those mean, but we stand beside family. Family is everything to us. And I feel like the closer you can be to your player-coach relationship, your coach-to-coach -coach relationship, and the program to community relationship, the better your program's gonna be as far as family. And then you're gonna hear us say one and no brotherhood. Um, I think a big thing and a big turning point for us at East Central was when we just focused one day at a time. Just go 1-0 every single day. If everybody on the team does their job and contributes to the brotherhood, we're going to be okay. All right? Adversity is going to strike at all times, but as long as you focus on your job and your responsibility, we're going to be fine. All right? Our philosophy, I know a lot of people ask, what are we going to do offensively, defensively, special teams? Our philosophy as a team, we're going to play complementary football. All right, meaning if offense and defense and special teams is rolling as one, that's complementary football. If offense is struggling, the defense has to be able to pick them up and vice versa. All right, we're going to play fast, smart, physical style of play. All right, yeah, we're going to play with some tempo, but mentally we're going to play fast. We're going to have an understanding of what we're doing and be able to just react and do things instead of having to think about it. All right, and then the football is everything. We've got to take care of the football offensively. We've got to go create turnovers on defense. On offense, we're going to be a multiple spread team. The biggest thing, in my opinion, is get the ball to playmakers. They make all the plays, get them in space, and let them do what they do. But take a lot of shots. We want to extend the ball down the field and all that good stuff. Defense, we want to be physically dominant. All right, Just like when we played Kingsville a few weeks ago, we just physically dominated them on all phases of the game. And that's what we have to do here at Permian Basin to make a difference in the long start. We have to physically dominate we got to fly to the ball and we got to play together. 
We're going to need multiple on defense as well. And the special teams, all three phases are just as important as the other. We have to dominate on special teams. All right. A big thing for us, and it's actually in that hallway right out there, it says we're going to develop champions, right? And in that hallway it says those that will stay will be champions. And I truly believe that. You know, we're going to be champions on the field. We're going to win a lot of football games and have a chance to win some championships. All right, but it extends to so much more than that in a program. We're going to be champions in the classroom. All right, when we walk across that stage and they graduate, I want them to graduate with a diploma in one hand and a few rings in the other. That's what champions do. All right, in the community, we're going to be champions. I am big on community service. We have a 1,200 community service hours goal every semester for our team. And we accomplished that this past semester in my previous school. And we're going to accomplish that every semester here. And as future husbands, fathers, and leaders, we're going to be champions. You know, football is an avenue that us coaches take because we get to develop young men. We get to change their lives, but we get to change the lives of the future as they become husbands, as they become fathers, as they become leaders. We get to make an impact in them. We're going to be champions in all walks of life, and I am pumped and ready to roll. So thank you guys, and Falcons up. questions from you guys. Chris, hello again. Uh, Jacob with CBS 7. Um, you mentioned that you left a really strong team, a strong program. Can you tell us more about what drew you here to West Texas and to UTPB? These two individuals beside me, first off, when I got to meet with them in person, you know, a phone you can over only see so much. But when you get in person and you talk to these people about their vision and their plan for um, what the future holds here, that was huge. And then when you get to see what they have coming back as far as the football players, the talent's there. And anytime you get to step foot in a palace like this, in a town and a community like this, it, it makes it hard not to be. So, hope that answer that. Chris, you're coming into one of the football capitals of the world. How does that feel? And how do you put UTPB on the map here alongside some of those world famous teams that are from this area? Yeah, I think uh, we all probably have seen Friday Night Lights, I'm sure. Um, so we all know the history of this place and the stadium we get to play in um, a few times a year. But to be in Texas, to be in the powerhouse capital of football in the world is amazing. You know, I, I told some of the guys that I want to bring on staff that how did I get this opportunity? Because I am the coach at the University of Texas Permanent Basin. I'm one of one, and the staff is one of one. We get to coach here, and it is phenomenally um, humbling to be able to be here and sit in the seat and hopefully put us on the map. I, I think we're close. I think it's not easy to start a program. Like I said earlier, he did a phenomenal job, but we got to take the next step. And I think we have the leadership in place. I think we have the support and the backing of our donors and alumni to make it happen. To you, what does that next step look like? We have to we have to go one day at a time. We got a long ways to August, but we got to go out there and have a winning season. We gotta go out there and show that we are making that step. You know, I'm always gonna be, I wanna go 11 and 0. I wanna win a championship every single year. We always wanna go 15 and 0 and end up playing in McKinney for a D2 National Championship. But it's a process to get there. It's not an overnight success, um, but we have every tool in place to get there. I don't know what that time frame is. I'm just focused on one day at a time to get there. Hey Chris, uh, Jenna Lee Game News West 9. Um, so I've noticed that you already are giving offers to players around the area yep. and beyond. I'm yep. already kind of getting a jump on that. What do you hope to accomplish in your kind of first year of recruiting, and what do you look for in future top football players? I, I think any coach that takes over a program wants to keep local talent home. And we've done a good job of that in the past year, of going to the Odessa Midland area, going to the outskirts of this and our out and getting those kids. And we're going to focus on that again. Um, recruiting has changed, the landscape of recruiting has changed. You have to be able to have a great mix of high school players and transfer players to build up your team in the nucleus of what your culture is going to be as far as the team. But it starts right here at home. As you said, we've offered nine guys at, within an hour up here, and that's just me proving that we're going to recruit locally. And we're going to get those guys, but we're going to get the best players in Texas that we can possibly get to come here to the University of Texas program. Chris, we've all probably seen the headlines about the youngest head coach in college yeah. football. Uh, what would you say to people that say this guy is too young or he doesn't have the experience to be successful? I'm an old soul. Like, <laughs> I mean, when you sit down and talk to me, 
I, I, you probably think I'm 40. I still have <laughs> good hair right now. We'll see. Wait, wait on that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, even when I was a student assistant at Henderson State, I didn't treat myself as a student assistant. I always had aspirations and goals of what I wanted to do, and I've always put my best foot forward and put in the extra work all the time. And my goal is so high, and I think everybody should set their goals high with no fear of failing and just go out and do it and grind every single day and see what happens in life. And that's what landed me here and such a great opportunity because I just kept kept working and kept grinding and never let no be the answer. Just find a way. You mentioned a little bit the guys that you're going to bring with you. What do you expect as far as staff changes? Yeah, so we're still getting into that. Nothing's official yet, but there are going to be a few um, holdovers from the last staff guys that I felt were really, really um, good at their jobs and did what they were supposed to do and guys that I feel can fit in with our culture and what we're doing. Um, I'm obviously going to bring in guys I've worked with in the past, guys I, I admire in the coaching profession, and guys I have the utmost respect for and know that they can come here and work with me and we can be the best recruiting university in D2 football in Texas and we can be the best developers of talent in Texas. We've heard different variations of the question I'm about to ask get answered, but what do you think that you specifically bring that makes you the perfect fit for this program right now? I think this program just needs someone that's going to come in and be able to relate to the players and change the culture. The culture is, it was built on a great foundation. It just took a standstill. We just got to get it going in the right direction. And get these players to believe, believe in one another, believe in the staff. Like I said, they didn't choose me. I chose them. So it's going to take a little bit of time to build that trust, and I know that. But my age helps me. My staff's age is going to help us be able to relate to these players and, and help them understand that, you know, we were in their shoes just a few years ago. We understand what they're going through. We want to help them in life. Besides the practice field when we're yelling at them and getting them going, you know, when we're in this building, we are trying to develop young men and trying to help them in life. And they're going to see that our love and our care for them is great. Um, kind of piggybacking again off of the being here in the football capital, you know, it's hard to get people in the seats on Saturdays here, but it's not on Fridays. So what are you going to do to engage the community and get people in those seats on Saturdays? Yeah, like I said, community service is huge, right? Getting out of the community, seeing my face, seeing my staff's face, our players' faces out there, giving back helps tremendously. But the ultimate driver of everything, resources, fans, attendance, all that is wins. As we win and as people believe in what we're doing as a program, that's going to happen naturally. There's going to be a little bit of excitement in the beginning. I know that the first couple of home games, I'm sure, it's going to pack out and there's going to be a great attendance. But can we keep that going with our wins? We have to play exciting football that they're proud of and that they see that we're doing the right things in the community and school, that they're going to be able to back us. That's the big thing, it's just winning. Winning cures all. You've spoken about the foundation that's already been put more specifically what do you want to keep from what's already been done here to kind of build on that a little further? Yeah, I think these guys value, obviously, the resources of the town that they're in. They love being in Odessa. They love being in Odessa. But these, the, the previous staff did a phenomenal job of recruiting great talent, here, great young men. It's just building, not just having a one deep of really, really good players that believe in the culture. You have to make the entire roster believe in or they can't be the entire roster has to believe in your culture and the way that you're going about things, or you're going to have people that stick out like a sore thumb and make your program take steps back. And that's the big thing here is we have a great nucleus of core players. It's the rest of the roster that we have to really evaluate and get them to either get on board with us or they're going to have to get lost. You mentioned A&M Kings, though. What else? Have you learned or what do you know about the rest of the Lone Star Conference and the team should be facing? Obviously, Angelo State's very good, right? They're a very good football team. Um, they're very good recruiters. Recruiters drives everything. If you're good at recruiting, you can get the right players. I think the Lone Star historically has been such a dominant powerhouse um, conference, and that's intriguing. That's exciting to be a part of. So many great programs have come through here in this conference, and so many great programs are still in the Lone Star. Um, every single week, we're going to have to go to work. Every single week, we're going to have to show up or we're going to lose, all right? Every single day we get to work, we know that we have to go beat West Texas, Angelo State, Midwestern, Kingsville. We have to beat them every single day in our work ethic and what we're doing. 
Uh, because as I watch film, none of these are cupcakes. Every single team, week in and week out, they're good. So that's, it's going to be a lot of work, but we're going to get there. How would you define success in this first season as a coach? Um, changing the culture, making everybody in this community believe in what we're doing again. Believe in the Permian Basin Falcons being a powerhouse. We all know the deaths of Permian and the local schools and the legacy that they've had and they've created in Texas high school football. How do we get people to have that same belief in what we're doing here at the college level? Um, everybody knows what Commerce did a few years ago, right? As they, they built that program, Colby Carthel came in, changed the way, changed the culture, and then a short years, a few short years later, they won a national championship and he goes on to see that house. Um, so a, a lot of what Colby did is what we're going to do here in the sense of getting this thing headed in the right direction.